I can't take a hit. Apparently it only took one punch to the face. Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Courtney, if you are new here, welcome. As you can tell by the title of this video, this is a story time video about the time that I was mugged. I'm gonna just mention that this video is not kid friendly. There's violence involved in this video and illegal actions, so don't watch this video with your kids around because it's not really kid appropriate. I'm not overly sure how long this story is going to be as I haven't really told it for a while and I don't know how many details there are. I was only 16 when this happened, so this was like 12 years ago or something like that, so it was quite a long time ago. First of all, I'm gonna set the scene for those of you who live in Brisbane. If you have heard of Moorefield, you know that it does not have a great reputation for safety. And that is where this incident happened, at, at Moorefield Shopping Centre. I was with my boyfriend at the time, I was 16, so we didn't have our licenses. We had caught a taxi there and we were planning on catching a taxi home. It was late at night and we had planned to go see a movie at Moorefield Shopping Centre. And by the time we got out of the movie, it was like 10 o'clock or something like that. It was late, like 10 or 11 o'clock, I can't remember. I think our mistake lied in the fact that we didn't make it through the whole movie. I can't remember which movie it was, but it was really, really incredibly terrible and boring and neither of us wanted to finish the movie. So we left halfway through the movie and we went to go home. So there was no one else around. It was just the two of us waiting in the taxi bay for the taxi that we had ordered which I don't think ever showed up by the way. <laughs> and that is why Uber is around now. Thank you, Uber. We left the movie and we went outside the shopping center and we waited outside in the taxi bay. I heard a commotion behind me and I turned around and there was about, if I had to guess, I'd say somewhere between 15 and 20 large guys. They were teenagers, but they were big. Like, uh, I think they were Maori or something like that. I'm not sure. I don't know really. They were just built big. Yeah, I turned around and they were all heading over towards us. And at the time, I didn't really think anything of it. Like, I wasn't scared, which I probably should have been. They all came over to us and they kind of surrounded us like a circle. And we were just like sitting, sitting in the chairs, just kind of watching what, <laughs> like, hey guys, what's going on? All of a sudden, one of the guys out of the group grabs my boyfriend at the time and starts, you know, hitting him. I was 16 and I didn't know what, like, I was so confused. At first, when they start, like, picked him up or, like, grabbed him, I thought he knew them. I was so naive. I didn't know what was going on until they started, like, or this one guy started beating him up. It wasn't everyone that was involved in it. Everyone was obviously there, so we couldn't get away. But there was only one main guy like doing the actual attacking. He was beating up my boyfriend at the time. And I kind of sat there in shock for a few seconds, unaware of what was going on. And my brain was registering the situation. And then as soon as I figured out what was going on, I stood up and I started telling him to stop. Obviously, I can't do anything. I was a small 16 year old girl and there are a lot of guys here that are much, much bigger than me. So I started yelling at him and telling him to stop and like I turned around to the other guys because they weren't actually attacking, they were just watching. Obviously they were all part of the same mob but they weren't attacking. So I turned around them and I told them to make him stop. Like I, I didn't know what to do. And as I was getting desperate and starting to plead, the guy stops hitting my boyfriend at the time and turns around and punches me in the face and completely knocks me out cold. I can't take a hit, apparently it only took one punch to the face. So I fell to the ground and I was knocked out cold, I don't know how long I was out for, but by the time I came to, the guys had taken stuff out of my bag, like they took my brand new phone, they took my brand new I iPod at the time, which was those old school ones where, with the wheel because it was really um, old. And they took my wallet, which had like two dollars or something in it. The guys had, the guys left. I don't know where they went. They walked away. They went in the direction that they came from. And my boyfriend and, at the time and I were kind of just sitting there like, what the f just happened? <laughs> so we went to go inside, back inside the shopping center to try and get into safety. 
but the doors lock from the outside at a certain time and we couldn't get in so we kind of stood there like thinking what do we do like we've had our stuff stolen we don't have phones on us we don't have money on us because our wallets have been stolen to like use a payphone, which existed back in those days. We just didn't know what to do. It was late at night and there's no one around. And then I guess a movie must have finished because people started like coming out of the shopping center and the doors still open from the inside. So the doors opened and we went inside and we kind of sat there and we went to the police beat that was in there and it was closed and we kind of walked around just like looking for someone who worked there. And we found a security guard and he obviously we told him the story he called the police and then the police showed up to like talk to us about it and they show up you know police officers with weapons <laughs> and we tell them what's going on and we said they went that way and they turned to us and they said oh that's J Mob. we don't mess with them that's literally what happened like I was like what do you mean? They just like beat the crap out of my boyfriend and took all our stuff and we're telling you where they went and you're not going to go get them because what you're scared of them? Like I didn't, I was so confused at the time. I'm, I was, I was so confused. They took us to the police station where they locked us in. They separated us straight away and they locked us in separate rooms. And then we were, we both got given a piece of paper with a bunch of photos of different men on them. And basically they said, can you pick the one that was doing the attacking? And we both picked the same person. We both recognized who he was. Obviously we're in this different room, so there's no way we could have talked about it or like cheated answers or whatever. And the, the police officers, I can't remember because it was so long ago. I can't remember whether it was that night or like the following day or the next week or whatever, as everything was unfolding, told us that he had been brought in for questioning and released. That was that was it he got nothing like he didn't even get a slap on the wrist he got asked some questions and then let go so that's what happened they ended up driving us home because my dad wasn't answering the phone because it was late at night and we had no way of getting home so the police car drove us home and then a couple of weeks later i got a phone call from like the detectives or the police officers or whatever probably the reception at the police station saying that they had found my wallet and it still had the like two dollars or something in it that was in there in like five cent pieces probably i asked them did you find my ipod or my phone you know considering you know exactly who did it did you get them back and no they did not so <laughs> i got my wallet back i feel like it probably cost more in fuel to get to the police station to pick the wallet up with the two dollars in it than it did to get my two dollars back but obviously getting your wallet back with all of your things in it is pretty important anyway so i was thankful for that so i got my i got my wallet back but that was all i ever got back i never got my ipod or my phone or reimbursed or anything like that just nothing and then i can't even remember how i found this information out it might have been on the news i can't remember because it was so long ago but not even a couple of months after that happened and we got mugged the same mob at the same shopping center tried to mug another young teenage boy and this teenage boy's father happened to be around and the father got involved and obviously tried to stick up for his son who was being mugged and these people that mugged me and my boyfriend at the time I don't know whether it was just that one guy or whether more people got involved I don't know but they actually ended up killing this teenage boy's father and throwing him in a lake it just goes to show that the justice system completely failed that little teenage boy and his father in the fact that this person that mugged us clearly has a violent history and has no remorse or anything like that and the police just didn't care. Like they literally said to us when we called them at the shopping center, oh that's J-Mob, we don't mess with them. So that was really upsetting to me to hear that if maybe they had just done their jobs correctly in the first place this man would probably still be alive and it was just upsetting to me and it made me really angry but yeah that's all the information i have from start to end of the story of when i got mugged when i was 16. it's a bit full on anyway guys that was the <laughs> morbid i'm sorry this is completely usually my videos have some upbeatness to them but this one kind of doesn't that was the story of the time that i got mugged when i was 16. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to follow our journey. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.